Well, this is a recipe for Easter cupcakes and it's Easter 2020 and things are a little bit difficult in the world at the minute with this horrible virus. And I know it's caused a lot of difficulties with people, especially getting, you know, items in the shop. And I've been very mindful of that. So this isn't like a, a triple layer, beautiful Easter cake, maybe like I would used to make. It is some simple chocolate Easter cupcakes. And the beauty of this is it only needs 100 grams of flour and one egg. I know, things are real precious at the moment. Um, we seem to be uh, stockpiling flour, eggs, pasta, and toilet rolls but I can assure you no toilet rolls are used in this recipe so I do hope you enjoy this and uh, stay safe um, with this virus about and take care and enjoy cooking this I know it's difficult um, but maybe the kids can get involved or just yourselves but I do hope you enjoy it so with my stand mixer I'm just going to pop in hundred grams of plain flour um, you could use this by hand, it doesn't really matter, but I just find my mixes easier. And then in goes 20 grams of cocoa powder, followed by 140 grams of caster sugar there, along with 40 grams of soft butter. I'm just going to mix these ingredients together now really, really gently, really slowly um, on a slow speed until it's like almost like a gritty texture. Um, if you've got any bits clinging to the side of the bowl, just stop your machine, stop what you're doing and just get a spatula and take it from around the side of the bowl. Now the next thing I want to do is add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. I don't add that in at the beginning simply because I think it clings to certain ingredients in there like the butter so now I know that it will hopefully give a real even bake. So I've just sort of whizzed that in there nothing too dramatic and then I've got here 120 millilitres of milk with one egg and I've just whisked it through and all I'm going to do is pop that in now and I'm just going to mix it till it's combined. You don't want to over mix this. Again, if there's anything around the side of the bowl, just get your spatula and take it off. So I have a tray here, a muffin tray, with 12 of these white baking cases. Now I like to use white ones because it doesn't matter then if I splash anything along the sides because I'm going to use these really pretty ones afterwards. And once your cake is finished, you can simply pop your cake into the pretty, pretty baking cases and that way then you don't get any mess or any residue onto the pretty ones. Next stage, really easy, um, helped by this uh, mixer here because it's got a lip, but you just want to fill the cases halfway with the mixture. You could also use an ice cream scoop if that helps to get the mixture in. And once you've done it, then all you have to do is pop them in the oven for around about 15 to 20 minutes until they're nice and springy. So I've just taken these out of the oven and they are nice and springy. You just want to take them and put them on a wire rack to cool down. You're not going to do anything with them for a while now until they do cool down because the next phase is icing. And if you don't give them enough time, then very sadly, you are gonna be left with a pile of wet icing which is not going to be very nice so these have to cool down and this could take a little while now whilst they're cooling down because they're almost there now I just then slip them into the other baking cases ready for the next phase of the icing and decoration Now that your cupcake bases have cooled, you can now start to make your buttercream. And so here we have the icing sugar, which is 300 grams of that. Then you want 100 grams of butter. And 40 grams of cocoa powder. And 40 mils of milk. Now, I am going to be using my stand mixer in a moment to whisk it up, but if I put this on now, it is going to like have ice and sugar go absolutely everywhere. So what I'm just gonna do 
is I'm going to start it off in the basin and then once it's sort of amalgamated and as you can see the ice and sugar there I'm trying to keep it out of shot once it's been amalgamated it's then easier for the stand mixer to do it without as I say ice and sugar going everywhere up my nose in my hair I know this is not easy to see oh it's at times like this when I really do really really do wish I had my studio kitchen back again but we will get there this virus will not stop us baking that's what I say so that's just starting you can see they're just to come together so now I'm going to put the whisk on and I'm going to whisk it for around about five minutes because this will then turn it into a beautiful soft fluffy mousse I've finished whipping that up, as you can see, it's a beautiful mousse here, I hope you can see it well enough. Um, I do miss my extra camera guys and all my overhead cameras and all the studio equipment now. You guys do such a fabulous job. Um, but you can see here that to be able to pipe the buttercream onto the cakes, I've just got this tall old cup and then I've got my piping bag with my nozzle already on. Um, and I pop that in and then I fill it because I find it's easier and you're not getting all the buttercream all over your hands and stuff. Now, what if you don't have one of those icing bags? Well, take an ordinary bag, fill it, and then just snip off the ends and then you can actually still pipe it. Or alternatively, just get a knife and just and a spoon and just spoon it on and swirl it. I'm sure if you've got kids, they can be kept amused for quite some time doing that. So. How do I decorate mine? Well, there's lots of different ways you can do it. So just a nice squirt of buttercream on there, followed by some flake. And why not have some mini eggs? It's a good job these aren't about all year round. Otherwise, I would be in big trouble. So there you have it, your Easter chocolate cupcakes. The full recipe that you can print out and get more great ideas from is on the website and you can watch the video again. There is also the nutritional fact sheets too. All you have to do is go to my website cookingwithemily.co.uk